How's it going, Gray Boys? It is week nine. And we've got to face off against a six in one Rockets team. I'm going to quickly interrupt this video to again say thank you for getting the channel above 2,500 subscribers as a reward and as a thank you for that. If we hit 200 followers on Twitter, I'm going to be giving away a exclusive Goonmaster t-shirt. Again, though, we're going to do that on Twitter. So once we hit 200 followers on the platform, uh, we'll do a giveaway there. And the link to my Twitter will be in the description below. Um, but again, thank you guys for 2,500 subs. That's incredible. Toledo, uh, lower overall than us. Expected to win this game. Uh, but we, again, higher overall. Our defense is better. They do have the advantage on offense. Uh, and it looks like a pretty big advantage uh, statistically. They've got the edge on the turnover differential. But after last game, we're actually back to just even on that on the season. So hopefully we can just get that positive. Who has Toledo played so far this season? Again, our losses are a close one to NC State and a close one to Akron. Uh, and Toledo has beaten Old Dominion, Western Kentucky, Texas State, Akron. They lost pretty badly to Kent and then have beaten Buffalo and Northern Illinois since then. So we're looking to try to become bowl eligible this game. And they're looking just to keep that one loss if they can on the season. We have 1,500 points to give out this week. And of course, the first 1,000 are going to go to Josh Clifford and Frank Blair. Um... Actually, are they going to go to Josh Clifford at all? I don't think... Yeah, we're gaining. We have the chance to beat Oregon State. Uh, we're going to send it. It would be pretty big if we could pick him up. We'll offer a scholarship to the 72 overall defensive tackle, Clinton Whitfield. And then we'll give the rest of our points just to Mark Morris. Decent wide receiver, and he's not actively being uh, recruited by any of these big-name schools. We do have two players ready to visit Vince Young. And Travis Bracken. Uh, so if we can, we'll send them to that, what is it, the Central Michigan game? Otherwise, I guess they're just coming here to Toledo. And yeah, just can't go week 12. So we'll make this game a little bit more high stakes by bringing a couple of recruits to it. We didn't have a crazy amount of chaos last week as there was only a couple of top 25 games being played. We did have a big upset with Rutgers beating the number seven team in Penn State. Uh, this week, maybe a bit of a bigger chance for upsets or, or I guess, ranked teams losing uh, multiple ranked matchups, including the number two team in the country, Michigan. They're undefeated, and they'll have to play Minnesota, who has made it into the top 20. But for now, the only game that we care about is our own. A two overall advantage over the Toledo Rockets with a two overall edge on offense. Uh, and just the one overall edge on defense, they're sitting at a 75, 77, and a 75. Uh, the away team will give them, well, they just have their normal uh, aways, but we'll put the blue pants on Toledo. And I think we got to wear gray in this game. Um, maybe we go all gray? I think that's going to be the look for today. So coming into this one, uh, they do score more points than us on average. They move the ball better. We pass the ball better than they do, but they are top 10 in the country running the football. 254 rushing yards per game. And defensively, they're not bad either. They're stopping the run. Uh, not quite as well as us, but very good. Uh, they're not giving up a whole lot of yards or points. This is a, going to be uh, theoretically a tough visit. Two prospects visiting for us. We're not going to focus too much on that. We just got to get the win as they have a good center, uh, a good left guard, and a good right guard. So the offensive line for Toledo should be pretty solid. They do have some injuries, but so do we. Jackson out with the partially torn MCL. He'll be out for the rest of the season. Uh, but they've got a right end, an outside linebacker, and a right tackle out for this game. Uh, only one of those guys potentially playing. So it's going to be a rainy day here in Rainierson Stadium. Open for the best at the factory as the Rockets maybe will just uh, snuff out the flame. Tails does not fail for them, so they're going to take the uh, ball to start the third quarter, which means we get a start. And after taking the touchback on the kickoff, it's going to be a read option for this offense to open it up. Ed Bird with the spin move makes a man misses and is able to get himself seven yards on the ground. So this should be a relatively 
difficult defense to play again. Toledo's been having a good season so far, which means we're going to have to really mix it up in the play calling department as I just got to get rid of that one. We had, I think it was our X receiver coming open over the middle, but no way we could accurately make that throw. So on that play action, we throw it away and it brings up a third and short. Looking to convert. I'm not super confident on this one, though. They're not going to bring pressure waiting. Serge Mitchell's not open. This is a tough throw to Wilson, but he's going to come down with it near midfield. I did not think that that was going to work, but thankfully we do move the chains and a chance now to give Wagner his first carry as he's going to take it up the middle, find some space and get six yards himself. I think we just got to keep running it though. Second and four looks like they want to bring pressure with the safety, but they just back off and Wagner gets hit at the line. Falls forward, maybe a half a yard gained there. And already for the second time on this drive, it's going to be third and three. Stacked up over the box is Toledo. We'll step back to pass. They're bringing the pressure. A is open. We give it to Wilson. He takes a big shot, but John's got us that first down. Edbird passing the ball well enough so far to start this game and handing the ball off just fine. As that time, Wagner finds a gap. That's 11 yards. Wow. Seems like he just continued to get space and yards when it didn't seem like there was any more. And now Jerome Simmons will come in for his first carry of the game. He's got a lot of space. And he's able to knock down the safety that hits him, but then the rest of the Rockets show up. This drive all of a sudden has really turned into a quick one as we're down inside the 25. Looking to pass. They're bringing pressure. We're going to go check down, give it to Wilson. And that's going to be a decent one for Zach. If they're going to leave those short rats open, we'll take it all day long, especially if we can get seven yards out of them. A counter here on this first down. Sees Wagner kind of breaking a tackle, but just getting a couple of yards on the play. That one did bring us, however, inside the 15 as we're going to bring play action, which could go poorly because they're bringing pressure. A could be open. It's Wilson and sack. Wilson with his third catch of the drive gets into the end zone, and we're going to take an early lead on this one. So the extra point is good. A very mediocre kick return for Toledo. We'll start their first drive of the game. And on third and seven, we're already going to hop in with them. As this is not going to be an easy one to convert. Our defense has been spectacular all season long. This is supposed to be a good Toledo offense. Can they do it? They go with the check down and it's well short of the line to gain. Fourth and three. The defense holds three and out for Toledo. A mediocre punt return gives us okay field position. We'll start at the 31 as again, we're going to hand it off and Jesse Wagner gets four yards before the big hit. And I would like to go deep on this pass, but I'm not so certain it's going to work. Looking at Mitchell. Uh, oh, that's that. Yeah. Wow. Okay. A brain dead decision to even try to throw it there. I'm incredibly lucky that's not a pick six. Now we're lined up with the slip screen, but I don't really like it. So we're going to audible out of it. See if anybody is able to get open on this third down. Trying to convert. A should be there. No problem. Wilson holds on to that one, and it's 13 yards. Might seem like we're only passing to one guy, but you got to remember we got two Wilsons, Zach and John. So a uh, double-headed monster there. Oh, my gosh, as we get the good pitch out to Broussard. Absolutely fantastic triple option. Dan goes 30 yards, and just like that, we're threatening to score again. Edbert absolutely getting pummeled on that one, but he makes the good pitch anyways, and I probably shouldn't be passing here, but I'm going to step back looking to throw anyways. A was open. Is anybody else? X is open, but no way that we're going to get the ball to Nix in there. Just ends up being thrown into the turf, which is a shame because it might have been a touchdown otherwise. Can we get this zone run off to Wagner? Will he get dropped behind the line? Blocking is good to start. Finding some space, trying to cut it to the outside, but he still gets seven yards. And once again, we've got another third and three. We're perfect on the day so far on our third downs. Three of three. Can we make it four of four as Jerome will come in and Simmons running, following the blocking. is able to get just enough to move the chains. Seven first downs already to Toledo. Zero. Can we get another one as we're looking for the end zone? The blocking not quite there for Jesse Wagner, but he's able to get three yards anyways. I'm looking for Wilson on this one. Second and seven will go play action on what could be the final play of the quarter, and we get it to Wilson, but uh, maybe not the best pass. Only two yards there. 
And that's going to bring an end to this first quarter. A pretty quick one at that. Uh, and we've played very well. I made one bad decision throwing a ball that should have been picked off. And it should have been points for Toledo. But other than that, defense has had one drive. They stopped him three and out. And the offense has moved the ball pretty well. So 7 nothing, threatening 14. Again, we are so far perfect on the day on our third downs. See if that can continue as we'll go with the counter on third and five up the middle. Wagner gets into the end zone. The five-yard touchdown run It's going to extend this to a 14 to nothing lead. Great blocking that time. That was a huge hole for Jesse to work with. So again, the extra point is good. This time, a uh, okay return. They at least get it to the 25, and it'll be uh, the start of the second drive for the Rockets. Four-yard rush followed by a nine-yard rush. Gives them their first first down of the game. And after a pass thrown away, it's going to be third and seven just like that. So they are further down the field, but can they convert a big third and seven here? Down 14, nothing. You don't want to go down 21. They do get the ball to start the third quarter, but that's not going to be good enough. Great pass over the middle. 19 yards, and they cross midfield. Toledo in the hurry up on this drive. Maybe feeling a little bit of pressure as our offense takes a lot of time off of the clock. This one a read option keeper by the quarterback, and he's got nine yards there. Reggie Miller with the smart decision to keep it and run. He takes a little bit of a hit, but I'd say it was probably worth it. Gets his team across the 35, and this time the mid draw up the middle goes for eight yards, and they move the chains again. His hurry up offense is wreaking havoc on our defense at the moment. They're going to go play action. Quarterback stepping around in the pocket, finds a guy pretty blanketed on the coverage, but Eddie Crosby holds on. They're inside the red zone. Not just inside the red zone, but down to the 11-yard line. Toledo finally looking like they can put something together and threatening to score another read option keeper. Quarterback keeps it, takes the contact, and gets eight yards inside the five. We need them to make a, some sort of misstep so the defense gets a chance to breathe. But this hurry up is just absolutely killer. And there's our break. They, they go with the hard count and Dowdle, one of the offensive linemen gets called for the false start. So that backs the Rockets up to a second and seven and gives the defense a chance to make some subs. See if it's enough. Could be wide open. No, the counter is absolutely blown up in the backfield. The rush defense finally coming in clutch. It's third and 10. This is where the defense has a chance to really shine. Could hold them to a big field goal. Quarterback steps back. It's a slip screen. He's hit as he's throwing. So it's incomplete fourth and 10. And it will be the special teams coming out onto the field to try and kick this field goal. Not the longest. About a 27-yarder kick is up. That's easily through the uprights. But holding them to three is not uh, all that bad. Our offense will now get a takeover with an 11 point lead and 338 left in the half as we'll run it up the middle looking for some blocking. Wagner gets five yards and the clock's going to start to run on the end of this second quarter. Since Toledo does get the ball to start the third quarter, I wouldn't be all that upset if this is the final drive of the half as we find John Wilson again. He gets 12 yards, his fourth catch of the game. Bird 7 of 10 through the air right now for 69 yards and a touchdown. That's nice as we run it up the middle. And Wagner, just the speed. Shot out of there like a cannon. Gets 10 yards. We're over 100 as a team on the ground. It's second in inches as we've crossed midfield. We're going to go play action. Looking to throw one potentially deep. We'll see what it looks like. Nah, can't risk it, but we will give it to Nixon. And we'll get our deep ball 22 yards downfield. So down to the 26-yard line. Edbert, I think that's his longest pass of the game. As we'll try the toss play. Simmons, not a whole lot of space to work with. And he's going to get hit behind the line for a loss of one. Oddly relying on the uh, outside run here. As we'll go with the pitch on second 11. And that one was a really risky one. But we give it to Wagner. He's got some blocking. He's got the corner. Doesn't get the stiff arm cheese and gets knocked down out of bounds, but it's inside the 10 for a first and goal. That pitch was really risky, but it paid off big in the end. We'll look to stay perfect in the red zone as on first and goal. We'll go with the counter to Simmons, and Simmons has a big gap up the middle, and he's going to make the most of it. Second or six yards to make it second and goal from the two or three. 
Drone was a little bit slow getting up after the play, but he's back in for another run, and he gets us a yard closer. It's third and goal now. And it's time for the Drewski Specialist. We'll go up the middle. Fullback dive to Smith. Third and goal. Trying to stay perfect on third downs. And Smith gets in. Just barely met as he crossed the goal line. But it's just enough to break the play. And it's going to be 21 to nothing. Again, the extra point is good. A very mediocre return as Toledo will throw the ball away on first down. 41 seconds. They get a 12-yard pickup. Uh, 25 yarder. Okay, we're gonna step in because the clock is gonna be moving real soon here. 36 seconds and one timeout for Toledo as they've crossed midfield here at the end of the half in the rain. A big pass kind of goes with the check down, gets eight yards, and again the clock is going to be moving. So we'll see the hurry up for Toledo. Rockets have a second and two as we tick down to 20 seconds left in the half. They're certainly nearing field goal range, if not more. There's the first down, which will stop the clock as they get eight more yards. 16 seconds left in the half. Every second matters for Toledo here. They're trying to get into the end zone for the first time. Plenty of time, but plenty of pressure. Is That's a big check down again to Darius Burns. They keep throwing their out. It keeps working. Makes it a first and goal with seven seconds left. This could be the final play of the half. We'll see if they go for it. Running back absolutely dead tired. They're probably going to go to him again. No, it's the corner of the end zone and wide open, but out of bounds as Reggie Miller can't find his man. That'll be the end of the half. You got to think maybe you take the timeout and take your points, especially because they're getting the ball to start the third quarter, but I'm not going to complain about it. We're up 21 to three. The offense really has not had a step wrong all game. I made one questionable throw that could have been picked off, but other than that, absolutely fantastic. Perfect on third downs. Uh, three times we've found the end zone, so we're still perfect in the red zone. And the defense has done a, a more than solid job holding them to three points in the entire first half. So what can we do here for this third quarter? They're going to take a touchback. Uh, incomplete pass on a first down. Second down is a seven-yard rush that sets them up here for this big third and three. Toledo needs to get into the end zone on this drive, or at least early in this quarter. If they want to stand a chance, and that's a big run up the middle, that's going to go for 13 yards as Toledo does move the chains and convert on third down. The Rockets are back in the hurry up. We saw that work really well uh, in the second quarter, but they couldn't turn it into a touchdown, and that one, <laughs> a very weird throw, kind of got glitched and just goes incomplete. So it's second and 10, pass thrown away, and just like that, we're back to a third and 10. A lot of third downs is what it feels like for Toledo, but it's just their fifth of the game. So they'll try to get across midfield for the first down. Over the middle, they go to that check down, and he's just short. No, he just barely, as he was falling at the end there, gets over the line and moves the chains. Reggie Miller, the Toledo quarterback, will hand the ball off. No, he's going to keep it on the read option. And that one goes for six. 30 yards rushing for the quarterback as they'll go back into their hurry up once again. Just a big hurry up team. The another read option makes the good cut enough to get the first down, but he's taking a lot of hits on those options. All it takes is one big play to get the stop. I would love to see a turnover, but I'm not certain when it's going to come. This one, another option, and the quarterback decides to keep it. We'll see. Is this QB going to get caught out trying to do too much? You could see a fumble. He's going to keep it again on the option. There's the fumble exactly as I predict it. He's going to drop it, and we're going to recover. So the quarterback down three scores is caught trying to be the hero, and we make him pay for it as we'll get our first turnover of the game and keep them just at three points. Meanwhile, Wagner is above 70 yards on the day now as we've got a second and three, and we'll go play action again. They're bringing a little bit of pressure. I got to get rid of this one, but I can't in time. My man was open, but we get sacked for a loss of nine, and our chances of being perfect on third downs so far in this game is definitely in jeopardy on this one as I'm going to throw the curl route. Mitchell comes down with it, and Serge is absolutely gone. His man misses the tackle, and it's Serge Mitchell going the distance. All the way into the end zone. A big passing touchdown as we'll increase the lead once again. Ed Bird, 9 of 12, finds his second passing touchdown of the day. Just a perfect ball. And then 
Serge Mitchell with that burst of acceleration is able to get past the Toledo defender. And we're just going to keep increasing the lead here. Once again, the extra point is good, and they're going to start this drive with a sack. The defense good there. This could be a quick three and out as the momentum is fully on the Eagles' side. It's third and 17, a big ask for this quarterback, especially coming off of fumbling the football. He's got some pressure. He's going to throw it. It's intercepted, and we're going to get the ball at the 11-yard line. That's actually the backup quarterback, Chuck Smith, that was in. So on his second pass, he throws an interception. You got to think maybe the starter got injured on that option. We'll throw it to Wagner. He's going to hold on through the contact to get us inside the five. Reggie Miller bruised Cernum. So that quarterback is out for the game for Toledo, which is going to make things even more difficult. We'll go read option. Ed Bird is broken and it's going to lose a yard on second down. Makes it a third and four. Running those read options is just so risky. It seems like it's about a 50% chance that it'll work. Still perfect on third downs, but this is a risky one. Four yards to go. We'll go up the middle, and Wagner can't get into the end zone. Stopped inches shy. It's fourth and one. Just an absolute massive play to stuff him at the line as we'll go back to the fullback dive. Giving it to Smith. Can he get his second of the game? He can. Completely untouched into the end zone. Courtney Smith on his second. Rushing touchdown of the day. The extra point is good. Even though, okay, it didn't show it at first. 35 to 3. And I don't know what just happened there in the sim. But the stats say that we got another interception. So that backup quarterback's really having a rough time. We take over inside the red zone. This one's turning into an absolute blowout as we find Nixon, and he's gonna get 17 yards for the first and goal. This is turning into one heck of a blowout oh so quick. We're plus two right now in the season turnover differential as Wagner gets into the end zone for the touchdown. And just like that, it's going to be 42 to three. This team seems unstoppable. They got to go for the runs. There's a holding at second and 15, third and 15 as the pass is dropped in Toledo with this backup quarterback in who obviously is not great. He's going to have a tough time converting, moving the chains here. Pressure coming. It's another slip screen, and that one's going to be dropped for a huge loss. It's fourth and 20, and we are absolutely smoking these guys. Well, I don't think anything crazy is going to happen during this punt, but you never know. So we're going to watch it because everything else has been going so well. A chance to return it, and we're going to take over at about the 40. Still 22 seconds left in the third quarter. We're up 42 to three with a chance to add on to that. I'm going to send Serge Mitchell deep because you never know. And on the play action, they're bringing some pressure, but we're just going to throw over the middle to find Broussard and continue to move the ball so well. 21 yards there. Ed Bird is broken 200 yards through the air as we are still a perfect five of five in the red zone. And... Jesse Wagner, if he could have spun around the lineman there, had a huge gap instead. It's a loss of a yard. And that's going to bring our third quarter to a close. Uh, this one's already a win. We just got to go through the motions in the fourth quarter as we are up 42-3. to Toledo with the backup quarterback can't seem to get anything going, and the defense has done a phenomenal job. And our offense is unstoppable as well. Second and 11 can we continue to be perfect in the red zone? A big run for Wagner sets us up with a third and short. And we're not perfect on our third down, so I'm not too worried about it now. We're just going to run up the middle and go for it on fourth down if we need to. Wagner has the space, and he's getting tackled before the line, but he's able to fall forward. So five yards puts him at 97 on the day. And not only that, but it'll move the chains for another first and goal. We're going to go with the toss. We'll see if he's able to get the edge. He needs to make a man miss. It has no chance. He got swarmed by about seven rockets there. So it's a loss of a yard. And on second and goal, we'll just try to throw it. See if we can find somebody open. I see some stuff. It's a little bit scary. Lucky that one wasn't picked off. I just couldn't decide which guy to throw it to for too long. We had multiple people open at different points there. I just couldn't press the right button at the right time. So it's third and goal from about nine and a half out. We're going to hand it off up the middle. Wagner's not going to be able to get all of it, but he's going to get most of it. And we're going to go for it if coach lets us on fourth and goal. But instead, 
he decides to go for the field goal. Can't blame him. Make it a 42-point game. Assuming we make this, though, kick is up. And it looked good to me. Refs say it's good. 45-3. to 4.23 left in the game. Can the defense get another turnover? I would love to see it again in a chance here for a quick three and out. We know this quarterback can't throw very well. Will they run it? Oh, that's certainly not going to help him. A false start's going to back him up. It's going to be third and ten now. I would go so far as to say that our chances of getting this stop have probably more than doubled as they will just hand it off up the middle. And on third and ten, I don't think that's going to work. So it's fourth and six deep in their own territory. They're going to have to punt that one away, and we get good field position. Uh-oh. I don't know what happened, but McLean, uh, our backup quarterback, has come in. So... Hopefully, Ed isn't hurt, but we'll get to see what the backup can do. An accurate pass to Broussard on his first attempt, and he just dropped it. Put that in the absolute perfect spot. Hit him right in the hands, but if he can't hold on, that's a problem. And Broussard's who we're looking at again here on second down is... McLean's going to have plenty of space to run. B was open there, but I'm just going to take the yards on the ground. McLean definitely a little bit faster than Ed Bird running the ball as we'll give it to Simmons here on third one and see if he's going to be able to pick it up and Jerome able to get towards the edge and gets us to pretty much midfield with another first down. See if McLean can now run the read option as he's going to be able to keep it. The block's not there, but we're going to get the face mask call anyways. So bailed out when they finally have a good defensive stop. So Ed Bird is not injured and I didn't do any mass subs, but it seems like our coach may have elected to put in the second string offense because now Robinson is getting some carries. Uh, and that was a good one with eight yards there on that option. So we are just doing so well this game that Coach has put in the backups, which is absolutely phenomenal news for us. Second and two, handing the ball off again. Simmons needs to make some magic happen. He can't quite do it. Loses a yard on the play. It's going to be third and three, and we'll step back, look into pass, seeing if we can convert this one. Easy pass. Bennett holds on to it, stays in bounds, and gets the first down conversion. So McLean gets his first pass completion. Should have been his second if Broussard would have held on to the first one, but I'm sure he's not going to complain. Simmons up the middle, stumbling forward, and he still manages to get 11 on the play. This team is moving the ball with ease is what it feels like. Let's see what McLean can do on the play action in the end zone. Wilson holds on to it through the contact. And we, oh my gosh, we scored another one. McLean with a great throw, but Wilson with an even better catch, high pointing it and holding on through the contact. So the extra point once again is good, 52 to three. And we'll see if they can do anything. And my goodness, it's another turnover. <laughs> it's happening too quick. I don't expect them. So we don't even get to see them in the, uh, in the sim. Offense just continues to move. McLean keeping it on that option. We'll just slide down. Let that clock burn a little bit. And I would let the clock completely burn out. But I think we're about 20 yards shy of 250 on the game. And we do have recruits visiting. And I don't remember if they need that. So if we can pass for another 20 yards, that would be fantastic. There's Broussard holding on to one. That'll give us a couple of yards. And we'll see what we can do on third and four. Again, Broussard is our target man, but I'm not sure what he can do. He's got the space, and he's going to come down with it. Break a tackle, and there it is. Passing for 250 yards as a team. We can just let the clock burn out now. In fact, I'm going to let McLean come out in the victory formation. He's done a solid job in his few drives as the backup quarterback. So we'll allow him to take a knee. Clock will hit triple zeros, and my goodness, what a win. Toledo came into this game 6-1 on the season. We come in 5-2, and, and now we're both 6-2. We're bowl eligible after just eight games, and from here on out, every win that we get just increases uh, the prestige of the bowl game that we'll be playing in, so that's absolutely fantastic. On a three-game winning streak now after the disappointing loss to Akron, and we just absolutely dominated these guys they never had a chance and i think we came up with four turnovers as well so plus four on the season in the turnover battle 
the numbers completely tell the story that was absolute domination 14 points in the second quarter 21 in the third in the 52 to 3 win 18 first downs Toledo did have 11 but 178 rushing yards to their 86 and 250 passing yards exactly to their 117 they had four turnovers we dominated the time of possession battle Jesse Wagner goes 19 carries for 102 yards and a couple of touchdowns and Leon Walters the cornerback with the tackle for loss and interception just a stunning game for us no new injuries which is nice and we were able to get some playing time on the backups as there's a little bit of an upset on uh, some of the games around the country let's go ahead and advance towards week 10 and take a look at our top 25 and I think that this bye week is coming at a perfect time for the team rest up after a big game and then get ready for the end of the season Ooh, on top of that, a 77 overall running back and a 73 overall wide receiver have committed. We had good visits, a very good visit from Vince Young. 940 points there and some players ready to visit. Uh, we're not ranked, which we didn't expect to be. But what about our top 25 polls? There was a big one. Georgia Tech, the number four team in the country, who was undefeated, lost. I think it was to North Carolina. Do we have anything else crazy? Michigan, another undefeated team. Our previous number two loss to Minnesota, 41 to 28. So two top four teams. Georgia Tech lost that 31 to 16. Do we have any other losses? Uh, number 10, Texas. And number seven, Florida lost to TCU in Georgia State. Maybe it's Georgia Southern. I, can, I think it's Georgia State. Uh, and they play number one Georgia this week, so that's not going to go well for them. Number 14, Wisconsin lost to Purdue. And anybody dropping out of the rankings? Syracuse, Rutgers, Stanford, and Texas A&M all drop out. And look at that. Receiving votes behind UCF, Oklahoma State, and Akron is us, Eastern Michigan. We're actually tied with Akron and in front of Ball State. So the MAC making a late surge in the season to try and get a couple of teams ranked. A little bit of chaos in front of us would be nice. And... If we could get ranked in front of the team that beat us recently, that would be nice as well. In the Heisman watch, it's still Brandon Brown at the top of things. And a loss, a one-point loss against Alabama. He goes 22 carries for 194 yards and two touchdowns. So he continues to impress, and he's now almost at 1,300 yards. And he's got 15 touchdowns on the season. All in all, a very solid week for us. Uh, especially with how big of a win that was in another game that we weren't favored to win. So we come out and just slap around Toledo to get our bowl eligibility. Unfortunately, that's going to have to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And you want to be notified when these new videos get posted. And then you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. So some links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. But all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the gray boys, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios.